Hi, my name is Ryan Rainslate. I am a gameplay capture artist for League of Legends, and that means that I make the champion trailers and champion spotlights alongside my team. Um, and in this video, I'll be going over the new League Director tool. Now, League Director is an internal camera tool that we built using our API, which is now available to you. In this video, I'll be going over what League Director is, how to use it, and uh, some of the changes that we've done to our replay system in general. Uh, and then in the next video, I'll be going over how to do a shot in League Director, which hopefully you guys can follow along to. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, so when you first open League Director without a replay open, uh, you're gonna get a menu that looks something like this. Uh, now all this is doing is telling you where your League of Legends.exes are, um, so that League Director knows where to hook onto. Uh, most of you will probably only have one or two things, uh, probably the C Riot Games League of Legends, which is your main client. Uh, and if you're a part of the PB, you'll also have a C Riot Games PB client. Now, the only really important thing to do here is just make sure these boxes are checked, uh, because that's how League Director knows to hook onto your device. So once you have those checked, uh, you can go ahead and launch a replay. Now, you can launch a replay through a couple of ways. Uh, the main way, though, is to go to your client and uh, after a game, you can click up here to download the replay directly, or you can go to your profile, go to your match history, and pick a game from around here. Now, I've only played one game on the today's patch. All of your replays will be uh, unavailable as we change patches. Uh, but if you want to download a replay, go ahead and click this button right here. It will load, and by clicking on this, your replay will launch. All right, so once your replay is loaded, uh, League Director will unlock and look something like this. So this big box in the middle is gone, and instead we have a bunch of these tabs at the bottom. I'm going to take a minute to go through what each of these tabs does, as well as uh, show you what you guys should be doing on your first setup. So the first tab we're going to visit is the Key Bindings tab. Now everything in League Director is hotkeyable. We've already set some defaults for you that we think is best, but if you have a certain way of working or want to customize these for yourself, uh, you can do that in this menu right here. To customize whatever keyframe you want, go ahead and click in the box next to it, and then click whatever key on the keyboard you want to assign that to. Uh, we do do combinations, so you could do control and five or whatever you want. We also do multiple inputs for the same hotkey. And if you want to do that, again, just double click in the box and then click on whatever things you want to do for that. To clear whatever hotkeys you have set, uh, you can go ahead and click this X next to it and it will reset it to default. If you guys are curious what hotkeys I use, I'll post a picture in the description below. All right, so the next tab we're gonna visit, and I'm gonna actually change up our look here, is the visibility tab. Now this changes uh, what actually renders in your replay. Uh, so you can do the simple things like Fog of War on and off, um, but we actually go more in depth as it goes down. So the first one is actually Show Selected Outline and Show Hover Outline. What these do is if they're toggled on, uh, you can see this red line appears around whatever character I have selected or hover over. With those turned off, neither of those things, uh, those like red outlines, don't show up. So continuing down the list, we have Show UI. Now, what Show UI does actually is pretty cool. Uh, before, you were kind of locked to either showing all the UI or none of the UI, or these kind of defaults like this one or some of the other ones that you've seen in LCS before. Uh, but now with Lead Director, you can actually control individual elements of the UI. So let's say you want to show just the minimap. Uh, by clicking the rest of them off, you can show just the minimap. Same goes for UI announcements, chat, uh, even score and scoreboard. Uh, for the purposes of this demo, uh, I'm actually going to keep on the replay and the timeline. But normally, if I'm doing some sort of cinematic shot in Summoner's Rift, I'll have all of the UI turned off. In Lead Director, you can also turn off and on the champion health, structure health, ward health, and pet health uh, individually. So these last three tabs are probably the most powerful three. Uh, they allow you to toggle on and off the environment, the characters, and the particles, or any combination of them. So these three are mainly used to get a character or particle on green, 
or to get a beauty shot of Summoner's Rift where no other particles or characters are. All right, so before we visit the rendering, timeline, and recording tabs, we're going to jump back into our replay to show you how to unlock the camera. So Lead Director does work with this uh, top-down isometric camera, but we did also add the option in replays to go to a more cinematic view. By hitting backslash on your keyboard, uh, your camera will unlock and allow you to look around the world. So there's a few ways to control this camera. Uh, easiest way to look, look around is by holding your left mouse button. Uh, but to actually navigate through the world, you're going to have to use your numpad. By hitting 8, you move forward. By hitting 5, you move back. 4 moves you left. 6 moves you right. Uh, 1 tilts you down. 3 tilts you up. 9 pans you left. 7 pans you right. Uh, by using a combination of these, you can kind of start to move around the world. Um, what I find to be the most useful is actually when I'm trying to get to a place, using the mouse and holding left mouse button to navigate to a spot. And once I'm there, using 1, 3, 7, and 9 to adjust to whatever angle I want to go to. So moving back to Lead Director, we're first going to take a look at our Rendering tab. Now the Rendering tab is both how the camera moves about League of Legends as well as some of the things that are rendering within the environment. So at the top here, we actually have uh, locking our camera to a certain axis, as well as being able to manually change where our camera is located and where it's rotated to. Uh, by changing this value right here, you can actually change how quick your camera moves about the world. By default, it's set to 500, but uh, if you want to go to like a cross summoner's rift, it's pretty slow. So by changing this value here, you can speed up how quick your camera is moving about the world. Change that back. Okay, field of view changes how wide uh, your lens is. By a lower value, obviously, it lets you zoom in, while a higher value gives you more of a uh, wider look. Near clip and far clip, I don't have to tilt the camera this way to show off, uh, just shows you how much is rendering in the game. So if I change this down, it will whoop, render not that much. Let me change this up to a higher value. There you go. That's Yeah, so you can see it's only rendering up to that amount. Uh, the max is 24250, I think, and that's most of Summoner's Rift. Uh, but if you want to get more frames, it's better to lower that down and kind of just adjust your camera move. Uh, NavGrid Offset is a very interesting one because it allows you to change where the characters are standing. So if you get really close, you can actually see like Kha'Zix's feet, Rangar's feet are a little bit off the ground, especially Victor here, you can see. Uh, by changing NavGrid Offset, and then by cutting play, you can lower these guys to actually be on the ground or raise them. Um, if you have a shot like maybe you want Azir to be above everyone else, then you can uh, change the nav gear offset to do that. So skybox uh, is another thing we've added in. By clicking on skybox, you can have a drop down of a bunch of different ones. We're going to try and include as many as possible uh, for you guys to use, which are the ones we use in our cinematic trailers. Uh, but the file type is a DDS, so if you have Photoshop and are willing to like draw something or convert a, another file to it, you can actually have anything up there. For now, I think we're going to go to the Cloudy Sunset, which is my favorite skybox, uh, to do our shot. You can control the skybox using the tabs below to rotate it, offset it, which raises it or lowers it, uh, or change radius. Depth Fog is another tab that affects the rendering of the game. Uh, it allows you to, and actually I'm going to get a little bit higher so I can show you, have a fog with your lens. So what I mean by that is like it adds a tint to the game. So uh, you can see, like, unlike rendering, fog, all the things are still there. And if I move my camera, the fog will move with, with it. You can change the color of your fog by going down here to this bar and toggling it that way. You can also change the intensity. Oops, sorry, I didn't click exit out. Change the intensity with this tab right here, uh, as well as where it starts and ends with these two things here. Height fog, uh, while depth fog is linked to your camera, height fog is linked to the ground itself. So by toggling that on, you can see like it adds this cool little tint to Summer's Rift. And again, by hitting the button down here, you can change where that tint is. 
it's kind of cool if you want like a really like really like misty atmosphere or um, want to add like an overall tint to the game. So play around with it. It does affect characters too, so you can keep that in mind. So up next, let's take a look at the timeline. Now what the timeline allows you to do is navigate through your replay as well as set keyframes for your overall shot. Uh, up in the top left, we have the play pause button, which allows you to play or pause your replay. Next to that, we have speed, which adjusts the speed of which your replay plays. You can also change this by double clicking in here and changing the value manually or using the presets that we already have. Below that, these buttons allow you to jump around the timeline. So you can go back 10 seconds or forward five seconds. It really just allows you to find where you want to start your sequence, as well as keep replaying it over and over again. If you want a more precise look at that though, you can use the bar below to go to exactly whatever time you need. So we'll go over what these do in a minute, uh, but right now I want to take a look, a closer look at our timeline. So much like this bar up here, you can click on the timeline to go to a precise time. And once there, you can use these buttons on the left to add keyframes. You can also do this, you can also add keyframes by uh, using the hotkeys that we talked about earlier. But for now, we're just gonna click these plus buttons in order to add a keyframe at this exact time in this exact space. Once you have a keyframe there, you can click the left mouse button in order to see everything about it. So as you can see here uh, below, you can see the time they replay or the keyframes at, as well as the value that it holds. Different keyframes will have different values. So a camera position one will have a different value than a field of view one. To select multiple keyframes, hold the shift key while holding the left mouse button in order to select multiple ones. From there, you can change the time of all of them, but not the, not the values since they hold different values. So let's say I want them all to be eight and move it forward and all the keyframes will shift to eight seconds. Again, to navigate to those keyframes, I can just double click on them and the replay and the move will navigate to that moment. You can also move keyframes by selecting all of them or selecting the one that you want and dragging it on the timeline. So let's really quickly make a camera move so I can show you how to view and apply the sequence. Uh, let's say we have a another keyframe over here. And that will give us a move. We want to see what it looks like. Um, if you do it, if you just click on the timeline, it won't actually go to that move, that position. Uh, so you have to click apply sequence. Once you hit apply sequence, your camera, you're locked into that camera move. And by clicking either play or play sequence, uh, that move will play. When apply sequence is checked, you can no longer move the camera. You are locked into that position. So just uncheck apply sequence if you want to adjust anything. The play sequence button uh, actually will set you to the beginning of your camera move to the first key, to the first keyframe. So by clicking this, it will move you to the first moment in time and apply the sequence. Next to play sequence is copy sequence, which allows you to duplicate your sequence and new sequence, which allows you to start a new sequence altogether. Uh, if you accidentally click, click that though, don't worry, lead director saves after every input. Uh, and to load up an older sequence, you can either go to this drop down here and select it from the list or use the directory to find it manually. We're going to get a little more in depth to camera moves and really the timeline altogether in our next video when we go over how to do a, a move. Uh, but for now, that's pretty much it. All right, the last tab is the recording tab. Uh, and it's pretty straightforward, but there are a couple things to note. Uh, first off, the current available ones are WebM and PNG. Uh, but with League's API, you can really add in whatever codec you need. Um, other things is you can set a good start time and end time, as well as look at the frames per second and set those as well. Once you're ready to record your shot, um, all you have to do is click record or record a sequence, and League Director will output a video uh, into whatever file, whatever directory you like. So that's pretty much the high level walkthrough of League Director. In the next video, we'll be going over how to do a basic camera move um, with League Director to kind of get you guys started. Uh, but if you have any questions, feel free to reach out either in the AMA, on Reddit, or uh, at my Twitter, which is going to be linked below. 
uh, and either me or one of the other capture artists will try to help you the best we can. Uh, in the meantime, thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next one.